Okay. This is KMSP. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear from the International Space Station. Karen Nyberg, thank you so much. I'm going to start that over. Karen Nyberg, it is a pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, we've seen, in fact, I've been watching you on Twitter, some really fantastic pictures from space. We've seen uh, the sunrise shot in Peru, San Diego from space. You've even shown us how installing new data cables can be fun. So uh, give us an idea of, from your perspective, what it's, looked like, uh, what it's like to look at us from space. One thing I can say is the Earth is just absolutely beautiful. And I think every time I go to look out the window, everything looks a little different. Every time you pass over someplace, it looks a little different. The clouds are different. The sun is at a different angle. And so anytime you want to take a picture, you're bound to find something beautiful to snap a shot, uh, get a shot of. What kind of experiments are you performing in space, in kind of in layman's terms, if you can? We have a lot of different things that we're doing. We're, of course, doing a lot of um, experiments with fluids and combustion um, and uh, that type of thing. We're also doing a lot of experiments on ourselves, and that's a lot that we've been doing over the past couple weeks. We're doing um, experiments um, looking at um, our bone density because astronauts tend to lose their bone density very quickly in orbit, and we're doing a lot looking at how our diet might affect it and other ways we can mitigate that bone loss with exercise and things things like that. We're looking at our eyesight. We've noticed uh, changes in vision of astronauts for after they've been in space for a long time. So we're doing a lot of tests. And we're kind of hoping that a lot of these things will have um, applications for Earth. Um, certainly bone loss has applications for how we might mitigate bone loss for folks that have osteoporosis. And with the eyesight, there are a lot of eye problems um, in the world. And hopefully some of the research we're doing will, will help um, some of those folks. Well, we know you've been uh, preparing for this for years now, but do you ever get used to the confinement that comes from being in space and being in such small quarters? It's actually quite large. We, um, we have quite a few modules. Each one is about the size of a school bus or bigger. And there's actually quite a, lot of, quite, quite a bit of space. Um, I've never felt confined. Uh, it was a lot more confined. Obviously, the Soyuz vehicle that brought us up here is quite small. And when I flew on the space shuttle back in 2008, um, obviously a lot smaller. But the space station itself is actually quite roomy. I was reading a tweet from you, Karen. and. Uh, you know, you're doing a lot of work while you're up there. You've discovered that when you lose something in space, it eventually turns back up again in the ventilation grills. That's true. I had uh, put my I was wearing my glasses and I took them off to do something and I, I put them down in, in a place that I thought they would stay and when I went back to get them they weren't there anymore and I kind of looked around and, and didn't see them and of course you have to look in all directions because things aren't going to fall because of gravity. And so I waited an hour or so and then I came back in and searched right along the, the floor area where the, the air is sucked into the ventilation system and sure enough there they were. <laughs> Well, one thing here, we know you're not a slacker just by looking at your resume, but we understand that you were also able to, you know, while you were up uh, in the space station, able to check in to your class reunion in Vining. What was that like? That was really fun. I had actually, during our 20th high school reunion, I, me and a friend had offered to organize the 25th. And once I got assigned to this mission and found out that it was going to take place in the summer of 2013, which would have been the 25th, I sent everybody a note and said, sorry, I'm not going to be able to help organize it, but it would be really neat if I could call in and join. <laughs> I can only imagine. That's, that, that, I mean, you know that you just made their day by you yourself being there and then also for all the people that could see what it was like to talk to you in space. Now, I know that you're, uh, you have one child, and how are you keeping in touch with your child when you're obviously doing important things in space? 
Well, we have a uh, video conference once every weekend and sometimes on holidays where I can uh, actually see my husband and my son. I talk to my husband every day, sometimes a couple times a day. And I also uh, make a little video every day for my son that I send down uh, via email to my husband and he shows it to him usually in the evening before he goes to bed. And, uh, and then I get pictures and videos of him sent up to me as well. If, is there one or, or a couple of visual images that will stay in your mind forever as you look out toward Earth uh, as you're looking in from space? I think uh, the thing that I really hope sticks in my mind is the is the sunrises and sunsets. It's it's quite an impressive thing to see the Terminator on the Earth as it travels along the Earth, where it is completely pitch black on one side and then these vibrant blue amazing colors on the other and it just travels very slowly across the earth um, transitioning between day and night it is it is an unbelievable sight to see I, I just can't imagine I mean I've been looking at your tweets and in so many beautiful pictures it's really incredible that we can have this kind of communication with you while you're there did you ever think that we'd be here today Yeah, it's it's always it always seems like how did we ever get here? You think back to like the time I was a kid, and it 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 is unfathomable from that period of time to think where we've gotten. But what I'm trying to do with my pictures is is give everybody the best view of what it really looks like for us. So I try to use a lens that makes it look like it does um, for the to our naked eye as we're looking out the windows. And I try to make sure that the final picture has the colors and the depth that we see um, as well. And, and um, I just really want to give other people the opportunity to see as close to what we can as possible. Give us an idea of some of the unique challenges that you face day to day, things that maybe you weren't prepared for once you finally made it up there and just maybe, you know, doing what you're there to do every day. I think my, my biggest enemy right now is Velcro. <laughs> we have Velcro every way. It can be your friend, of course, <laughs> because we use it a lot. Everything that we need to stick to a wall or anywhere, we um, we use Velcro. But it also can be your worst enemy. I my socks constantly sticking to to Velcro, and my hair. This part of my hair, if I'm working in cl close quarters, I'll often wear headbands because um, it will stick to Velcro. So that's probably one of the biggest challenges, actually. Um, if you can just give us an idea for people who maybe maybe aren't sure what exactly. NASA astronauts, what, what is your purpose for being there? What do you hope uh, to accomplish? What are your goals? And, and, you know, give us a little bit more as far as what you're doing while you're up there on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, originally the goal was building the space station, and not long ago we basically finished it. We have one more Russian module coming up soon, but otherwise it's basically finished. And now the goal is to do science and use it to make investigations um, there are a lot of things, a lot of the science where gravity plays such a big role in how a fluid behaves, how a fire behaves. And if you can take out that variable, it's easier for scientists to understand what is really happening with the rest of the of the problem. And so it, it really, you can get a lot of advances in the mathematical equations that are describing these processes um, for the engineers and scientists who are working on it. And then also we're looking forward to further exploration. And a lot of the equipment that is here on the space station is kind of in a, it's almost a test mode for future vehicles. We're learning how to recycle water, we're learning how to power completely off of solar energy. Um, and again, and a lot of these things also can be used for Earth applications. And then there's the aspect of the international partnership. It's actually quite amazing to think that this space station came together um, with all of these various countries. And this thing was designed by various countries and throughout the world, but built here together, traveling over 17,000 miles per hour in low Earth orbit. I think that aspect of it is pretty impressive. It is, and so are you. We appreciate you taking the time. It is a pleasure, and thanks for all the hard work that you're doing in the name of science and uh, technology. It's really incredible. Uh, NASA astronaut Karen Nyberg, thanks so much for joining us. I'm glad you could join me on the International Space Station today.
station. This is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.